Hi, my name's Jonathan Hicks, and tonight I'm joined by... Andy. And we've just finished playing Talon. Now this is a GMT uh, sort of space combat war game. Uh, it's a little bit like sort of dog fighting, except the ships are a bit bigger than that really, so some of them can, they turn quite slowly, so moving around is actually quite tricky. And in terms of actually how you play the game, I mean, what you're aiming for, I should say, first of all, is in the scenario we played, and you can play a bunch of different scenarios, the game comes with a, a book full of, um, there's like a campaign and all kinds of different scenarios we played. We've been playing a very straightforward one where you're just trying to destroy the other ship. So Andy actually started with three ships, and he's only got one left, so I managed to destroy two of his. Um, but in terms of how you play the game, there's a very important chart here you need to be familiar with. Effectively, each round of the game consists of, consists of six turns, A, B, C, D, E, and F. And you see there are numbers spread around, one, two, three, four, five, six in different places. The key thing is that the number six occurs six times in every single phase. The number five only occurs five times though, the number four occurs four times, the three is only three times, etc. So the one only occurs once over here. In terms of how you do anything then, each ship has a certain set of stats here, this one, three, and zero. The first number is how many actions it's going to get each round. This ship only gets one action, and it will take place when the one pops up. So when you get to phase F, that's when this ship gets to take one action. This ship over here, you see, has uh, three, so it's going to take an action in three different places, in phase B, D, and F. So your ships don't always get an action, it depends when the number's going to come up. The next number here is a two, and that's your movement. So each ship, when it moves, only moves one space, and it only does it, again, following the track here, when the two comes up. So it's only going to do it in C and F. This one, though, can move three spaces. And the final one is the turning uh, radius. So if a ship needs to turn, for example, this one, the way you do it is you turn before you move, and then you move your one space, and the turning radius is one, so you'd stick a little chit on, um, and it's been back in the way, oh, there you go, uh, here, and that means it can't turn again until it gets to this space. So on its next time it can move, you get rid of this, it would move forwards, and then on the turn after that it can start turning again. So these kind of indicate your turning circles, which can be quite slow for the bigger ships. Um, and once you've moved, you can then shoot. In fact, you can shoot even if you haven't moved. Now you'll notice that we've been actually writing on these with dry white markers, that's how it's supposed to work. And there are various things that are going to rely you on you writing on the ships. Uh, so each turn at the end of the ABCDEAF cycle, you get to change your rating here. And you change it according to a table, so effectively you can make the numbers, you can get more actions. Here's a big complicated table you can see. Uh, so you can increase your actions, but it's going to decrease your speed. Um, so you're kind of trading off one for the other. Now you shoot by rolling dice. Each ship has a different set of weapons on it. I don't know if you can see this, but it's like a red bar and a yellow bar here. You charge up the weapons. You see some of these have been coloured in. You can spend an action to charge them up. I should quickly go through the actions. The actions you can do are add shield reinforcements to certain sides. That's those things. When they're not there, those are the shields that are there. You can add an extra one, which will absorb the damage. You can charge your weapons. Uh, slip sliding enables you to sort of move sideways. Uh, you can turn faster effectively with this one. Some ships have batteries which allow you to um, use actions even if you don't have an action for that particular round. Uh, you can change the initiative. The initiative is quite important. It basically says who's going to go first each time. And if you spend an action to change it, you can flip this over and it means that you'll be going first on the next phase. Uh, but yes, yeah, so you charge up your weapons. You roll dice to shoot them. There are tables for how much damage different kinds of weapons do and you're firing on certain arcs. You can see you've got shields on the front. Here I've damaged the two shields on the side. And once you've got through all the shields on your particular side you're shooting at, you start damaging the actual hull. And as they take damage, the stats get reduced, and also they can take critical damage. Again, you roll on a table, and uh, potentially you can blow up the whole ship, or certain systems can get damaged. So you keep flying around, taking all these actions, uh, trying to shoot each other until the other person's dead. All right, so what do you think? Uh, I quite like this game. It gives me the same sort of feel as X-Wing or Attack Wing, but without the massive, uh, massive outlay. <laughs> so it's all in one box. There is an expansion, I think, coming later this year or next year. Um, but the, the amount, you've got a good variety of ships, there's squad building rules, there's random terrain rules, there's a whole load of stuff to, to randomly create scenarios or well, if you do done with all the scenarios in the box. It can be a little bit fiddly, sort of um, changing sort of 
crossing stuff out, but it's yeah. much more streamlined than filling out big sheets of paper as in Starfleet battles or yeah. other stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The power, I think the power curve works quite well, how far you want to move or how much action points you want in a turn. Um, the initiative system is quite good as well because you can force an initiative change um, even if you don't have the initiative. So you can take it, or if you have the initiative, you can lose it voluntarily, um, as long as the other player doesn't try and defend that. Um, yeah, I also say I think this is quite a good war game. It's it's similar sort of capital ship battles for me as uh, Attack Ring, but in a sort of much cheaper format. <laughs> okay, rating out of ten, I'll give this probably about an eight. Okay. Yeah, certainly the natural comparison for me is something like uh, either Star Wars X-Wing or the Star Wars Armada. Now, I love X-Wing. I've played it a lot. I wasn't so keen on Star Wars Armada because you've got these big hulking ships that take ages to turn around and they just keep firing out the batteries out the side while the litter ships swarm around. And this feels closer to Armada to me, um, obviously without the miniatures, but it is quite difficult to turn your ships around. I'm used to sort of X-Wing being able to do like a K-turn, sort of a U-turn. You turn right around and fly straight back and carry on shooting. But with this, you can't. You end up flying quite a long way around the board, just trying to turn around so you can actually fire at them again. And it is really fiddly with all the little marking on the pens and you have to rub it uh, on the pieces with your dry white mark and you have to rub it off. Um, I wasn't so keen on all that. It just felt like it slowed down the game a lot. It was quite slow. It took us about three hours to play the game. Um, in the, the kind of time frame I'd expect a similar sort of X-Wing game to maybe be an hour and a half. So um, it's, as Andy says, it's an awful lot cheaper than going into something like X-Wing or Armada. And if you want a nice full package that does everything uh, for a much cheaper price point, it does it well if you're happy with all the fiddliness. So probably I'd be on a 5 out of 10, I think. All right, thanks for watching. Oh, that was... Oh yeah, Andy? Uh, I would also say, the first time I played this, we played two games in about, say, in about three hours. Okay. This game took a lot. This game was a lot slower. Um, I think it was just we was playing it at a slightly slower pace than possibly last time. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's um, yeah. All right, no worries. Thanks for watching. That was Talon.